If these RDNA 5 leaks turn out to be true, well then Nvidia should definitely be very concerned. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by PCTechForum.net. PC Tech Forum is a brand new website dedicated to discussing everything related to hardware news. From the latest processors to graphics cards or even upcoming consoles, this is a great place to expand the discussions we have here in my tech news videos. If you love watching me break down the latest specs on new hardware, this will be a great place for you to find like-minded individuals. So if you're interested in joining an online community of hardware enthusiasts to talk tech or maybe even make your first friend that isn't an AI waifu, be sure to check out PCTechForum.net in the description below or pinned comment. Okay, so RDNA 4 is just around the corner and we're already talking about RDNA 5 because as we've been told from previous leaks and rumors, well, apparently this new generation of GPUs is gonna be brought forward by around a year, I believe. It's really being fast-tracked to go ahead and try and leapfrog over the RTX 50 series and potentially crush NVIDIA's upcoming RTX Titan AI, or at least that's what the leaks and rumors would have you believe. Now, according to everything that I'm seeing, yes, RDNA 5 is looking to be an incredibly powerful generation, but the question is just how powerful will it really be? Can they crush NVIDIA or will they fall short? Well, thankfully, we just got a ton of new information from the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech when it comes to RDNA 5, and a lot of the information that he just divulged is absolutely mind-blowing. It would lead to, well, the RTX 50 series having absolutely no chance against these graphics cards. So let's go ahead and take a look and see whether or not I believe this could really happen based on everything that I know, as well as the upcoming processes from TSMC that these things will be based off of. So according to Red Gaming Tech, he was claiming that RDNA 5 is going to come with a ton of improvements, including full hardware support for ray tracing and AI acceleration, which to me sounds like basically any leftover software implementations that are currently being used in RDNA 3. By the time we get to RDNA 4 are likely going to be gone and certainly going to be gone in RDNA 5 and they will have a more NVIDIA like approach to handling those types of new workloads which will lead to substantial performance increases likely putting AMD in a similar type of performance bracket per core if you can even compare them that way when it comes to again ray tracing and AI. So that's really good to hear but the more juicy stuff that you guys probably want to talk about in depth is going to do with yes the specs of this upcoming GPU, the flagship one anyway, as well as the potential performance. So according to Red Gaming Tech, he did allude to the fact that RDNA 5 will substantially outperform the RTX 50 series from NVIDIA. Now, this would likely also include the RTX Titan AI, the biggest and baddest GPU they can possibly produce. And the reason as to why he's saying this is because RDNA 5 is not only going to be a chiplet-based GPU and the first one ever, not just with the memory controllers, but also potentially the GPUs as well, allowing them to produce a much larger overall GPU, but also, well, apparently he's hearing between 380 to 360 compute units. Now that is a massive, massive increase. Likely he's thinking that it is going to be the 380, which does mean that the full GPU die would likely have 192 WGPs. Maybe they'll shave one or two off. We simply don't know if these leaks and rumors turn out to be true. Now, are they true? Let's go ahead and break it down. So if we go ahead and throw together a chart here of what these upcoming GPUs would potentially look like based on these new leaked specs and information that we got, well, it looks like the RX 9900 XT, like I mentioned, would have roughly 192 WGPs, which would be four times the amount in the 7900 XTX. Now that is insane. And quite frankly, we'll get to how realistic I think that could be in just a moment here. But assuming this is true, it would be way too much power drop if they try to cross three gigahertz. So you'd probably be looking at around 2.8 gigahertz for the boost clock. And you would be looking at 32 gigabytes of memory, potentially running up to 36 gigabits per second GDDR7 at the most, although that is not confirmed and not leaked at this point in time. And it would likely also be using a 512 bit memory bus, although that again is not confirmed, but it would be likely considering the size of this GPU. Now, with all that in mind, you would be looking at over two terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, a TDP of 
probably around 600 watts and the performance would be insane. It would be a 4.4 times increase on paper over the 7900 XTX. Now, is it actually gonna hit that? No, it wouldn't even if the scaling was good. But to be honest with you guys, I don't think that this information is accurate. I don't think there's any way, shape or form that we're gonna see a GPU this large from AMD. Now, is it technically possible? Maybe, but even doing some simple math when you look at the gains to be had when they shrank down their TX, SMC node, it seems very unrealistic for them to hit this level of a target without having a GPU that's just so massive and costly that it wouldn't make sense for AMD to produce. So quite frankly, guys, I don't think you're going to see this GPU at all. In fact, an ideal situation would probably be a GPU similar to this, very, very similar specs, except for maybe a slightly higher boost clock and then moving down from 192 to 144 WGPs. And even that, to be honest with you guys, while it is certainly a lot more plausible, I just still don't think it's realistic for AMD to target that. The GPU would still be too large. Is it possible? Yes, again, it is probably possible because they could potentially get a 50% die area increase if they shrink their node a number of times before this GPU is released. And so it could potentially happen, but I think it's still gonna be too costly and too large for AMD to produce and quite frankly, unnecessary for them to beat the RTX 50 series. It's way, way more than enough. And I think you'd be far more likely to see a similar GPU to this again, 512 bit bus potentially with 32 gigabytes of VRAM, except for instead of 192 or even 144 WGPs, I think you would see 128 WGPs. Now, why do I say Say that well simply because if they do get a 30 percent plus density increase from shrinking their node potentially multiple times well then in the same die area they could move from say 48 wgps to 64 wgps you put two of them together in this brand new mcm approach that's never been done before as far as i'm aware at least especially in gaming and you would still have a gpu even if those gpus are smaller than our current 48 wgp one it would still overall be far larger than the 7900 XTX. And I think this is the maximum realistic size of a GPU that AMD would want to produce in order to keep the price reasonable. If they go any higher than this, it would just be far, far too large and way too unrealistic. Again, just because they can do something doesn't mean it makes sense. Even if they put four GPU dies instead of two and connected them all, well, 48 WGPs per GPU die would still be too high. So there's probably gonna be two potential situations we could be looking at here. Either two GPU dies, 64 WGPs per GPU die, or four of them with 32 per GPU die. And four simply seems too complicated. And so I think you will end up seeing two of them with 64. Now, what does this mean in terms of performance? Where is this gonna lie? Well, on paper, we're actually talking about still an absolutely enormous performance uplift. We would be talking about roughly a 3.15 times increase over the 7900 XTX. Now, scaling is never perfect, so with maybe 75% scaling, we would be talking about a 2.35X increase in terms of rasterization over the 7900 XTX. And is that enough to beat the Titan AI? The answer is yes, because currently, according to Tech Power Up, the RTX 4090 is roughly 23% faster than the 7900 XTX. On paper, the Titan AI would be 80% faster, but rumor has it once again from Red Gaming Tech that actually the Titan AI would be roughly around 63% faster in terms of gaming over the RTX 4090. Do some simple math, and that would put NVIDIA at roughly almost exactly two times the performance of the 7900 XTX, meaning the AMD only has to beat two times the performance, not three times, not four times. That's absolutely insane and unnecessary as RDNA 5 is a GPU generation built to beat the RTX 50 series and to be potentially somewhat competitive with the 60 series, but it's gonna be in between the two generations. It does not need to beat or even heavily compete with the 60 series. It just has to win against 50 series. With that being the case, would they? Yes, they would, because we'd be talking about a 35% increase in performance on AMD's flagship GPU over Nvidia, and they could even come in at a lower price. I think the Titan AI will target a minimum of $2,000, likely $2,500. If AMD comes in at even $1,800, it would massively undercut it, but I think they could target even $1,600 with this GPU. Still a very high price, a big increase since their last generation, but considering you could be talking about actually 
in excess of two times the performance and far better value than what Nvidia would be giving you, even for a flagship GPU, even for that high of a price, it's just gonna be a much better pick for a vast majority of gamers if you can wait and if they hit their targets. And that's the question, will they hit their targets? We'll only know as time goes by. But I did wanna bring you guys this video because I wanna caution four times increase in performance, it's not gonna happen. There's no way I would be absolutely flabbergasted if we saw that and I don't think there's any reason for AMD to do that. So I wanted to make sure that we keep our expectations in check. Over two times performance is insane, no other type of industry is gonna give you that as far as I'm aware, especially in the realm of technology. That's a crazy good increase and something that's gonna be highly, highly competitive and quite frankly, probably gonna stomp on the RTX Titan AI, but you will have to wait potentially who knows, six to 18 months after the RTX 50 series initially debuts, depending on if AMD can hit their targets to get this much better potentially GPU. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.